you think Mr. X was the only one that was working? This is what you got to understand. If you've seen all those people and seen them going from coast to coast when he went on the West Coast, this man was the one. Malcolm ain't never sold no papers and he never went out fishing. That's a lie. Never did. He didn't have to. All he would come is cheap. And I've got witnesses. It's different with you. You talking, but I've got witnesses. We went out and did the fishing. Okay, so he left. I'm not going to tell you what they were saying about it. But you, we are weak. You talked about Mr. Muhammad, you ate it up live, a uh, hook, line, and sinker. They saying the same thing about Clinton. They say the same thing about the TV minister. And Mr. Muhammad didn't do anything like that and took care of what he made. You don't see the women saying anything, do you? Why did Spike bring them? A liar. And we don't intend to forgive him for that. And you can take the word back to him because I know he got people in here today. Take it back to him. He is a liar. He's in love with a dead man. But I'm letting you know, if you let a dead man lead you, you're lost. You got to, if a dad, I don't care how good the man is. And I love Elijah Muhammad. You got to go find your living man to follow. And if you're that ignorant, then so be it. Okay, where the first place we go? Boston, Massachusetts. You know, they taught me how to say, they don't say Massachusetts, they say no, brother. They said, you say, uh, you don't say Ma Massachusetts, you say Massachusetts. We started out up there, on the street, in Back Bay, Five Wellington. Five Wellington. First thing he told me, he was cutting meat. And when he was in the church, he was working construction. But I'm going to tell you the kind of job he had. And I'm not biting his flesh. You want to hear the truth, right? I'm going to tell you what the facts are. He waved the flag out there. You know how the, they got the women out there waving flags? So they don't have to hire you to get a woman and a black woman. So they got to hire a woman and a minority. That's what he was doing, waving the flag. He maneuvered himself into that because you got to understand. He wasn't no, no he, 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 he knew what was happening. He wasn't no square. He knew how to move around and get the best thing. And he used that. If you don't think he did, then you, you don't know what's happening. But I was there. It's a difference. In other words, I'm going to get the job that I don't have to do too much labor. And if he could do it, so more power to him. So in Boston, he was cutting meat. I told him I was going to get me a job. He said, what kind of job are you going to get? I said, well, I'm getting my knife and fork, my man. He said, oh, no, you can't do that. That's what he's talking about. He said, how you going to handle pork? You following Malcolm? He didn't eat no pork. None whatsoever. First thing he thought, when he, last thing he did, when he closed the temple, getting ready to go home, he'd tell you about that hall. And he used to, you know what he used to call them? Chitlins. Chitlins. Then after we got in Boston, next thing I looked around, he left. What the hell is this? What is this? So, I got myself together, because there's arguing up there. <laughs> so I said, I'm not going to stay with this food, and he gone. So I'm getting my hat too. So I went to Springfield with a brother who was in prison with him called Osborne Faxon. I don't know about this, this mythical man that they have up there in the prison with him. I don't know him. What's his name? Bane. We don't know no damn Bane, no, do we? Yeah. We don't know no Bane. We don't know no Bane's. So we, we did, we know we grinded in Boston, flourishing. Next thing I know, he in Philadelphia with this brother. This brother opened up his home to him. That's where he stayed. He didn't have nothing. His brother gave him all his clothes that he was wearing. You think you know Malcolm? Tell me what size underwear he wore. Tell me where he bought his suits at. What was the name of the place that was in the, in, in, in the suit pockets? 
What size shoe did he wear? Did he wear socks that fell down? I had to tell him to put some on, put some garters on to hold up your damn sock. Why? It's because he went to the penitentiary in the 40s, 46 or 47. Ten years, you ten years behind. You might hear what's going on out here, but you've got to get out here and live it to know what's happening. And you know that because most of us have been in the penitentiary, which is the largest conglomerate in this country, the penal system. And you are the ones that's in there, the largest conglomerate in the country. Big business. So he called me and he said, what you doing in Springfield? I thought I left you in Boston. I said, you did, brother, but I'm not fooling with them people no more. I said, I found help them find a place, and I come here with Brother Osborne, Saxton, and Charles that was in prison with him. We don't know nothing about no veins now. I'll be finished in a second. I don't want to bore you, but I'll be second, but I want to set the record straight. If it costs me my life, I'm going to set the record straight. Because I know I will be avenged. No one goes without being avenged, brother, if you're a Muslim. It might take the Muslim 20 years, but the Holy Quran said fight against those who fight against you. Never be the aggressor, but if they attack you, fight in the name of Allah. Of Allah. To the end. And we don't, we don't wound, we go all the way. You have old saying, take him out. That's how you establish a nation, fearless men. Men who, who are for right. You can't, you can't say that you're with us, and then next thing we know you're doing something else, you got to stay away from us. So he said to me, he said, brother, he said, uh, I told him, well, I'm here going get ready to help Brother Osborne. He said, well, brother, he said, you're wasting your time. I said, what do you mean I'm wasting my time? I said, he's he getting ready to teach Islam up here in Springfield. How's that wasting my time? He said, well, see, because he was a smart man. Once you caught him and lined him up, put him in a bath canyon, he would move over. What you don't understand is that the man was a craftsman. He was a player. He was a pimp. You think he forgot all those maneuvers? You're crazy. So he said, okay, then I'll tell you what. He said, I want to bring you here. I said, where? To Philadelphia. And incidentally, he didn't pay my way to Boston, neither to Springfield. Now he called me to Philly. I didn't ask him to come there. I didn't ask him. This little functional illiterate didn't ask him. You say, how that little fat, big I do going to be with Malcolm? But I don't have to. I don't have to prove it. I got witnesses. It must have been something about me that he wanted. And he can bear witness. The next time he seen me, I come in there. I wasn't weighing like a what. I had me a little Jeff on, you know, a little cap. Just move in. They met us at the, met me at the train. And we got there and we went to work in Philly. In fact, we were so bad in Philly that Mr. Muhammad sent a, a, a representative with, you know, a, a king or president. When you're doing good, he sent some representatives to let you know you're doing good. He sent Wallace Dean Muhammad, Raymond Sharif, the Supreme Captain. He sent John Hassan, the, the head investigator. He sent Herbert Muhammad and Ward Dean Muhammad and Ethel Sharif, Mr. Muhammad's daughter. They were coming in. The only reason they get there, the car turned over three times and then nobody got hurt. But we were grinding. And I'm going to finish now because I'm going to let you know how he got to New York and then I'm going to finish. But I want you to know, don't play with us because we're not playing. We're going to tell you the truth. We're not going to lie to you. I've been married 37 years. My sister come from his city, Philadelphia. She was a jitterbug, but she, she, she accepted Islam. Malcolm's personal secretary did all his research when she was there. I married her. In 1955, got six children and been married 37 years. She, I, she, I'm nine years older than her. And she's still grinding. Because Muhammad made men. She saw us young standing didn't know what to do. They said, oh, God. 
So then it come time for Malcolm to come to New York. Anybody know how he come there? You want me to tell you? All right, there was a man who heard Mr. Farad Muhammad. His name was Sultan Muhammad. And he fell, he fell out of favor with Elijah Muhammad because his wife was talking about him. And he called the man in. He, he never talked to a man uh, uh, by phone or anything. And most of the time, he never talked to no brothers or anyone one-on-one. -on -one. He always talked to you in front of everybody because he didn't have no secrets. To make a long story short, Mr. Muhammad had to dismiss Sultan Muhammad. He was over the temples in New York and Washington, D.C. And he could roar like a lion. Big and posing man. Stood up straight. He met Mr. Farad Muhammad himself and shook his hand. I had never seen him before. And neither none of these brothers, just a picture. But we're not going to deny that he come because that's a lie. And I'm not going to live no lie. So Mr. Muhammad called to New York. Brother Malcolm, Brother Minister Malcolm, he didn't talk like that Freeman talk. Mr. Muhammad talked better than that. Although he did just had a third grade education, but he was bad. If he can attract Malcolm, you know he'd have been bad now. Because here's what he used to say, a dependable mule is better than a fast race off. If I know you're going to stumble down the line, I'm not going to not use you. I'm going to wait till you get to that line. And if you stumble, then I'll act. A dependable mule is better than a fast race off. He said, I am going to appoint you my minister in New York. This is where Malcolm wanted to be all the time. Everything he did, he would maneuver to get to New York. You know why he wanted to get here? Number one is that Here's what he used to say. I would rather be assistant minister in New York than to be a minister anywhere else in the country. I don't care where it was. I'd rather be in New York. Why? It's because Mr. X realized that the world's media is here. He realized the most uh, uh, intelligent people, black people in the world, lived in Harlem, 500,000 strong in one area. He realized that because he had been here, he knew that. And all he had to do was come here and start his conquest. Mr. Muhammad made him. Mr. Muhammad gave him permission to speak wherever you heard him speak. He had to ask Mr. Muhammad first. And you're talking about that sleazy Ozzy Davis. He would give a play downtown called uh, Pearly Victorious. Malcolm come and said, well, the minister... Uh, 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 I, the messenger gave me permission to go down there and see it because you know we didn't go to shows you know you talking about you wanted to follow Malcolm we didn't go to no movies catch you in the movie you get 30 this truth this truth that we are presenting to you announcing to some telling others and reawaking others that victory is at hand it was worth our struggle it was worth whatever we did some of my colleagues in their grave, the great Hussein Shabazz, Prince Seven, they in their grave, wrapped up in the clay. Usman Shah, wrapped up in the clay. My friends, your friends, for this cause. This is a great work. Otherwise, I wouldn't start out with it because I'm not an idiot. And I work with the top people, work for Don King ten years, taught him something. Saved his life. They're getting ready to take him out. Saved his life. Didn't we, Jeremiah? That's right. That's right. He can call me Joseph. I called him Jeremiah. <laughs> so I want to thank you.